Good morning, everyone. I hope y'all are doing well or afternoon or whatever it is you open that. Isn't that the beauty of being in an online class? Uh, so today I'm walking you through how to do the R project for this week. So you should be in the week three and then you're going to want to open this project document and it's uh, above where this video is located. So you should already be aware of where that is. So let me get mine open. So this first part um, tells you how to log into our studio if you aren't already logged in. And then it's going to walk you through how to get to the project for today. So all of these directions that you see here, I'm about to do with you. So let's get to it. So in the uh, workbench, we've got your home page. You want to go to the shared projects and then you're going to go to my last name. And then you're going to go to stat 215. And today we're doing analysis of categorical data. So check that box to the left and then you want to go to the more option and do copy to and you're going to push the home button. And then when you get to this home button, open your stat 215 and save that analysis in your stat 215 folder. Okay, now that you've done that and it's moved there, you should be able to go back to the home, open your 215 and you can open the analysis of categorical data. So while you're working, make sure that you save as you go. So if you change something like your name and you put Becky, you can see there's that asterisk up there. Make sure that you save it as you go. So click save so that it'll show up. See now that asterisk is gone. Now I know that this is saved in my file every time. All right, now today we need to create some analysis for categorical data. And to do that, you are going to leave this first chunk alone. So don't do this and don't mess with this. Anything in between these, this highlighted area, don't mess with. Um, before we move on, make sure you change today's date and your name and click save. And then we're going to go to the library. So remember that this library, again, don't change anything here. This is what's gonna help us do what's down below. So essentially somebody has already done some of the background coding so that we have an easier time. So we need to load this into our package. So highlight this and you can use the shortcut keys or you can click this run arrow or you can go up here after you've highlighted it and do run selected lines. But regardless, you need to run this. Now you can check to see if it's run by going down to your council window, um, or you can see that it ran with the little green arrow, not green arrow, a green bar that shows up to the right of it. So we're good there. Now, right now you can see we don't have anything in our environment window. So that means we haven't created or ran anything. So we're going to run this whole chunk. So 26, 27, 28 might be different in years if you created space, that's okay. But essentially you're looking for GVSU and then the left-handed arrow and then read.csv. That's our data. We need to read that in. And then the line below it says GVSU and then GVSU double equals and then a period and then the NA. Essentially, this is me telling um, R that if you see a period, count it as missing. You don't need to mess with that code at all. None of this do you need to mess with. All I need you to do is highlight it and run it, or you can click this green arrow. So when we do that, you can see over here in our environment window, it created our data. Good for us, we're ready, we're ready. We've got data, now we can analyze it, okay? So we've run the library, we'll run the data. You have to do that first, because when we call for certain things, it needs to have that library information in there. And when we do analysis, we need the data. So that always should be the start when you open these programs, Run the libraries, run the data, you need both. Those are your frameworks before you can get started. Okay, now I have this whoops thing, which you can use if you want to remember the variable names or you forget how to do that color coding. But essentially too, in this, um, in this Word document, I'm sorry, nobody's talked to me all morning and all of a sudden my phone is blowing up. Uh, in this Word document, it tells you how to adjust these things. I'm going to show you a couple. 
I'm gonna tell you too that for this first project, I'm pretty nice because I've color coded things for the way you need to change them, but nevertheless. So we're doing the very first, um, who's he, what's this? The very first piece of output. And so I'm gonna do a frequency table for the super, so superstitious. And to do that, I'm gonna use this code. So I'm gonna go back to my um, R document. I'm in 1A, so output A. I'm gonna paste this in here and I need to change the variable name, okay? So variable, we want to have superstitious as our variable. Our data, remember we called GVSU and there's kind of hints for that in the Word document. You can see I have superstitious, it's highlighted in yellow, GVSU. That's what we want. And then I have count, I have frequency there. I actually think it's count though. I don't think I'm gonna be able to use that. I'm gonna need to change that. This is count. Yeah, count. I'm not gonna be able to use frequency. Okay. So I'm not sure why it was so fussy like that. If it's fussy with you where you saw those little uh, red lines, that means that it's thinking it's an error. So you can just try to retype it. You can see it's actually the exact same thing as I have uh, before. Um, I'll actually even say like use count, not the word frequency. Um, but anyway, this is the code you need. You can see when I run it, when you go to the bottom, it gives you the frequency. So this is what you're going to need to take a screenshot of. So for you to answer your first question on Blackboard, you need the frequency table for superstition and you'll upload that. I can show you here when we go into um, your document and you can work through this however you'd like. I personally like to do it as I'm doing it. So I would upload that frequency table and then it says the frequency of people who say yes. So when I go here, you can say yes is a thousand. So I would answer that. I usually have all three open. So I have my R, I have the Blackboard assessment and the Word document so that I can answer as I go along. So we just did 1A, 1B. We're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're gonna switch it to births. No, I'm not. I'm not using birth. I'm using, oh undo that, but I'm using superstition. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing and this time I'm actually gonna copy the code here and I'm gonna switch and create a percent frequency table. So exact same thing, but now you can see the percent. Actually, I'm gonna switch this to proportion. That was what I wanted. And you can see here the proportion um, and the next question asks, what's the proportion that are superstitious? Or say, no, they're not. So I would use this number, 0. 0.5585, and enter that here. And that's how you answer that. So you can answer those on your own. The next we're gonna do is the bar graph. And you can see we've done 1A and we just did 1B. We switched that to proportion. Now we're on to number two, which is a bar graph, and we're using percentages. Again, I'm gonna highlight this. I'm gonna pull it into my, not this, I'm gonna pull it into R, and we're on number two, so we're doing a bar graph. I'm sorry, that says birth. It's not meant to say birth. I think it's supposed to say bus, isn't it? What did we want? for people, yep, who ride the bus. So 
Going back here, the variable bus. Um, so this is going to be bus. And remember, this is going to be GVSU. And then we're going to change this color choice. We want to fill it with something pretty. So to do that, and I have this code uh, on your Word document, but to figure out what color options, we're going to use this colors and then the open brackets. And let's see, here we are. So here are all the color options down here. Ooh, let's choose Alice Blue. So I'm going to copy that and put it in the quotes. I'm going to run that code. See, it's being fussy with me. Let's figure out why. Let's just retype it. Sometimes copy and paste. What a goof. Okay. And I just retype it, I guess, if it's not going to let you copy and paste it. What a duty head. All right. Oh, that is very light blue. You can barely see it. Let's choose a different color. Let's run this again. I don't like yellow. I can't, I can't handle it. See, there's a ton of options. So, ooh, let's choose hot pink. Because why not? <laughs> All right, I'm going to put that in there. See, that looks nice with the quotes. It must be something the copy and pasting with the quotes. So be careful of that. Oh, nice. There we go. That's our bar graph. And you can see the percent is what we're doing because it says GF percents. If you want it to be counts, you would use bars and we'll see that further on. Uh, but then you would take a screenshot of that and then answer the percent that say, yes, they do ride the bus. And here we would do the yes. So you can see that percent there. And we're moving to number three. So you can either use this note or we can go back to our Word document. We did that, we ran the line of code. So here we're creating a two-way table. So I'm gonna copy this. And again, I might have to make some adjustments because it's not loving the copying and pasting, which is fine. So we want our explanatory variable, which I think is gonna be sex. Our response variable is superstitious. Our data name is GVSU. And it doesn't like these quotes. And you can see it because it's getting that little sad face there. Love that. So we're going to do quotes and I'll just type them myself. To be lazy, just quote, silly goose. And there's our table. Easy as that. And then there are some questions and you need to upload that table into Blackboard. But remember, observed count is what you actually observe. So it's going to be one of these numbers as that answer. And then the fourth option is just creating a clustered bar graph. So I'm going to go grab my code for that. And again, we might have to do some adjustments with those quotes. And let's paste it in here. And we need our response variable. And we said that would be superstitious because I think superstitious would change based on someone's sex. And then our data is gonna be GBSU. And again, you can see those frowny marks. I don't know why it doesn't like the quotes from Word, but essentially you want those things that are in the quotes to be green. So if they're not green, something's wrong, retype it, it's okay. All right, there we go. You did it, you did your first project. Doesn't that feel good? Uh, uh, uh. Now, save it, so push the save button, finish answering the questions in Blackboard, and you're all done, congratulations. We're happy while we're coding, right? I know, I'm stupid. All right, see you later.